Hello there, it's OK Plan B, and today we are out here in KSP, Kerbal Space Program. This is a reply to the video that was just recently put out by Real Civil Engineer. Uh, in that video, he tries to beat the real world speed record on the runway here in KSP. Uh, the real world, real world speed record is 763 miles per hour, or about 341 meters a second. Unfortunately, in that video, he is not able to beat it, but he does set his own speed record on the runway of 150 meters a second. So the point of my video here is just kind of a reply to that. I wanted to try to beat 150 meters a second on this runway, but also not just beat it, double it, and then not just double it, go a little bit above and beyond. I forgot to record the first part of me creating this, uh, this vehicle here. Uh, but basically what we got is uh, just two of the whiplash engines, some fuel tanks, uh, small wings on the side to kind of help with the downforce, keep it on the uh, on the ground for control, and then also a tail fin to help for more stabilization. Uh, we got three different points of break-in. We have the air brakes, two parachutes, and then also the wheels brakes we are using to try to stop us. On this run here, with it set... SAS on full power out of those whiplash engines and trying to keep it as tried and true as I can. This is uh, this is the best run out of this vehicle that I get, uh, aptly named the Gonzo Speed of Mark One. We are able to keep it right here on the runway, and we get 180 meters a second. So that that obviously beats out 150 because 180 is bigger. But I didn't want to stop there. I didn't want to stop there, so uh, I go and try to refine it, I pull out some of the fuel that we don't need, the oxidizer that we definitely don't need, because these are uh, air, breathe, air breathing engines, and I already have those air intakes, uh, mess around with some other bits and pieces here and give it another run, and on this run, I'm able to best my 180 meters a second with 232, not to spoil it. Um, but here we go, full power with the SAS on, and then about two-thirds of the way up the runway, I go ahead and hit uh, the brake action group, deploy the next stage, which is my... Um, ooh, a little bit of air. The next stage, which are my parachutes, and then hit X to kill the engines. And as you can see, we make it with that 232, but we get that little bit of hop at the end that I wanted to try to avoid. Uh, just that way we can keep it in more control, so I tried to change the direction of my control surfaces here Give it another go, but we get that hop again, so At this point I start just trying to refine a little bit more Tweaking angles, adding another air brake, I believe I also add two drogue chutes on the wings uh, Just to try to give it a little more stop in power and hopefully keep it on on the ground But we still get that lift off, so I I swap these out to the uh, rapier engines because I just wanted to test out different engines see if these do any better everything else is more or less the same it's just rapier engines this time this is me testing out the braking system for it just to make sure how quickly it can actually stop and then we give it a full send here and um, it's not great it's not a big improvement. This is just on board just so you can see what it's kind of like. But we still get that hop at the end, and I don't like that hop. So we delete it. We uh, create the Pinto Speeder. And on this one, I was thinking about using the uh, Mark I command module instead of the actual cockpit. And then I wanted to try to use this thing that I've seen previously on other KSP land speed records, where they put kind of two of these heat shields on the front to act as diverters. And it helps cut down on drag, but also helps reduce the heating of, uh, of high speeds. We don't really see a whole lot of heating right now because we, we're keeping it at fairly low speeds. Uh, but the in-game speed record is 1,808 meters a second. So at that point, you get a lot of uh, wind resistance and, and heat buildup. So this was something that I've seen be done i don't know if it was something that i'm not doing correctly or just it's not really worth doing at such these low speeds but i do eventually get rid of that here i'm arguing with myself of what kind of uh, setup and configuration i want for this i go back to kind of what the uh what the uh, the gonzo speed was looking like with the uh, the main body and then the two outer uh 
kind of external tanks with the uh, with the actual engines mounted on them. I put the wings on it. On this revision, it was more of me trying to create it as small as I can, as well as as light as I can, to try to help it accelerate as quickly as possible. And then uh, I was going to try to put a little spoiler on it to help with the downforce again, but uh, I didn't want to add that in there yet. I just wanted to see how it kind of uh, how it kind of fared as it is. I also upgraded from jet engines to the vector engines, the space shuttle esque engines. I know I still have those uh, those air intakes on the front. It's kind of more just for show, but the biggest issue that I was having with this was it, it had the tendency to get up to speed and then I'm guessing get air under it and around it that caused lift. So I was trying to just verify that and yeah, you can see that it, it really likes to try to take off. So I swapped out the front of the cockpit for one of these, uh, for the Mark 1 cockpit instead of the command module, adjusted some of the angles, added that spoiler like I said and also changed out the wheels to those small steerable wheels. I later fixed that because I didn't realize at the time that those wheels do not have brakes. And those brakes are something that I was actually kind of relying on to help stop this vehicle. On um, this attempt, the whole thing just explodes in the air. Don't know why. This thing had a big tendency to want to take off now. Me doing some twirls to see what's going on. Air brakes deployed, parachutes up, hit those vectors again, and just kind of... Just playing with it at this point. I try adjusting the angle completely on those wings and spoiler, um, but this just creates it, it, it makes it just very unstable, hard to keep in a straight line. So we go back to the Gonzo and create the Gonzo Mark II, which is the same thing again, but this time with the vector engines on the back. Realizing that I don't have oxidizer, I go back in there, add it back, and just seeing what this thing does, as you can see, it's not quite tuned to go as quick as it can, but it does get some speed here. So I'm just refining things again, swapping over to those steerable wheels, but again, they're not the best item because they don't break. I'm, I'm adding front canards just to help with the downforce. And then swapping the main body over for those uh, structural fuel silages to cut down on weight because even with those center fuel silages the the previous ones that I had being empty they weighed a lot more so I'm just going around tweaking things adding new wheels uh, I they lend that 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 can't speak apparently this is like my third or fourth time trying to narrate this whole thing I later find out that those front wheels are a little too far back and it creates it uh, it makes it very nose heavy and hard to handle so I just end up taking those down and flipping them around as you can see we uh, we just go off the runway all kinds of ways so in here yeah turning them around bring them back up just to create a, a bit of a wider stance and more stability for the whole thing and on this attempt I think it's this attempt I end up getting to two 289 meters a second. Here I'm just farting around with the uh, the air brakes, setting them to be a 90 90 degree deploy angle instead of the 70 that they're set to. They also now help with the roll axis to help keep it stable. Apparently not that stable because we still go off the edge and explode. We still get a little bit of air when going off the end of the runway, but the whole goal is to keep on the runway, so that shouldn't be an issue. Here, I believe we get 322. So, a little higher. Uh, swapping out those air intakes for nose cones, just because we don't need the air intakes. Making the whole thing white, just to make it a little more uniform. Still going off the end of the runway. Just watching these all back. This was about. This was all filmed over about an hour of playing. I later then find out that if I just give it a little bit of juice right at the start, I can set the SAS to prograde, and that helps with the stability just a bit. So I'll uh, I'll typically set the SAS, turn on the engines, and give it just a little bit of throttle, set it prograde, and then just unleash it and drop the hammer. There we go. And then we're going, going, little wonky, little fish tailing. Deploy everything, hold down the brake action group. 
and then look at that stopped nicely and we're at 423 meters a second so that's my reply to real civil engineer i would love to see his reply to my reply to his original video and see if he can uh hopefully either get, come close or top it but thank you for watching i appreciate your time don't forget to like subscribe and uh subscribe instead of subscribe but appreciate it bye